So, guys, basically we're getting into stoichiometry, and stoichiometry is what I would call the math of chemical equations. All right, the math of chemical equations. Um, the first module is what we call mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry. This is the simplest type of stoichiometry. It is a one-step um, stoichiometric problem. All right. Basically, what we're going to start doing here is applying the concept of dimensional analysis to reactions and chemical equations. So the purpose of stoichiometry is to try to figure out, for example, how much of a product gets produced if you know, for example, how much of a reactant is put in. So the bottom line is we are actually trying to figure out if you put in a certain amount of a substance, we're trying to figure out how much of a substance are we actually going to be able to get out of that chemical reaction, assuming that the reaction is 100% efficient. So that's our goal with stoichiometry. Okay, so we're going to start here with module one. These are what we call mole-to-mole -mole problems. All right, module one, question number one. It says, how many moles of ammonia gas can be produced from 2.0 moles of nitrogen gas when it reacts with an excess of hydrogen gas? Okay, so the very first thing that we've got to do with any of the problems in this particular unit is we've got to start first with a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so it says here that we've got nitrogen gas reacting with an excess of hydrogen gas to produce ammonia. So out of these three things, what are the things that have been sort of listed here that we would consider reactants? What are the things reacting with each other? H2 and N2, okay? So we're going to start out here with a balanced chemical equation. We're going to write H2. Uh, well, we are, if it recognizes my stylus. Here we go. There we go. Hold on. I'm asking you to recognize my stylus. There we go. Here we go. H2 plus N2. There's our reactants. And what are we producing from the H2 and the N2 reacting with each other? What's that? NH3. That is correct. We're producing the ammonia, which is NH3. Okay? So we've got all of our reactant and our product formulas written out. Now, is that equation a balanced chemical equation? No, that equation is not a balanced chemical equation. If we look on the left, we've got two nitrogens. And if we look on the right, how many nitrogens do we have? One. Just one. So how can I get two nitrogens on the right-hand side? Put a coefficient of two right there. So we're going to put a coefficient of two in front of our NH3. Now we've got our nitrogen balanced. How about our hydrogen? Is that balanced yet? No. On the left, how many hydrogens do we have? Two. Two. And how many hydrogens do we have on the right now? Six. We've got two times three, which is six. So how can I get six hydrogens on the left? Put a coefficient of three in front of the H2. You got it. Okay? So we've got our balanced chemical equation. Yes, Hunter? Doesn't that, um, two on, doesn't that three affect the N on the NH3? Yes, it does. So wouldn't that be six? Oh, no. Are you, are you asking me if the subscript three right here affects the nitrogen? Yeah. No, it does not because that nitrogen and hydrogen are not in parentheses. If the nitrogen and the hydrogen were in parentheses and then there was a subscript 3 after the parentheses, then yes, that 3 would apply to the nitrogen. But because it's not in the parentheses, that subscript 3 only applies to the hydrogen. But the 2 also applies to hydrogen? Yes, the coefficient that's in front of the chemical formula applies to every single element that's in the chemical formula. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got a balanced chemical equation. So remember what I said, rule number one for any stoichiometry problem, anything that we do in this unit, we've got to first start with a balanced chemical equation. So we first write out the formulas of all of our reactants and our products. We look to see if it's balanced. And if it's not balanced, we start adding coefficients. And we don't stop until all of the elements are balanced. Okay? So we've got our balanced chemical equation. Now what we're going to do is underneath that balanced chemical equation, we're going to write in the information that we are given and the information that we are solving for, okay? It asks us to solve for how many moles of ammonia gas, okay? 
And the ammonia is the one that has the chemical formula NH3. So right here under the NH3, we're going to write question mark and moles. It's asking us to solve for how many moles of ammonia gas. And then it says can be produced from 2.0 moles of nitrogen. So over here on the left, underneath the N2, we're going to write 2.0 moles. Okay? And then it also tells us that we have an excess of the hydrogen gas. So in other words, when they say that we've got an excess of something, that basically means we've got an unlimited supply of that particular substance. We've got as much as we need. Okay? So we've got all the hydrogen in the world, but we've only got two moles of nitrogen. And so the question is, if we've only got two moles of nitrogen, how many moles of that ammonia can we produce? Okay? So just like we did in dimensional analysis, we're going to take what we are given and we're going to start with that. So if we start with our nitrogen, we've got 2.0 moles of nitrogen. And we're going to set up our train tracks. Do you guys remember train tracks yeah. for doing conversions? Okay. So we've got 2.0 moles of nitrogen. Now, what we need is we need a mole-to-mole -mole ratio between the ammonia and the nitrogen, okay? We need the mole-to-mole -mole ratio between the ammonia and the nitrogen. And that mole-to-mole -mole ratio, you guys, comes from our coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, okay? So the mole-to-mole -mole ratio comes from our coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So these numbers that are in the front of the nitrogen and the ammonia, okay? So... The coefficient in front of the nitrogen, there is no coefficient. So when there's no coefficient in front of something, we assume that that coefficient is what? One. That is correct. So we've got one mole of nitrogen. For every how many moles of ammonia? What is that coefficient in front of the ammonia? It's a two. One mole of nitrogen for every two moles of ammonia. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that ratio in the form of a fraction. You guys might remember we then call it a conversion factor, okay? And we're going to put that into our train tracks. And we're going to arrange it such that the thing that we started with, the unit that we started with, we need it to cancel out. So, I started here with the moles of nitrogen. So, if I want to get moles of nitrogen to cancel out, which one of these things, the one mole of nitrogen or the two moles of ammonia, needs to go on the bottom? The nitrogen needs to go on the bottom. So, we're going to put one mole of nitrogen on the bottom. And then we're going to put the other half of that ratio on the top. So that means we're going to put two moles of NH3 on the top. And so what happens then is that the moles of nitrogen cancels out. So moles of nitrogen, moles of nitrogen, that cancels out. So now in our train tracks, remember that things that go across the top of the train tracks, those things we do what? Do we multiply or divide the things that go across the top? We multiply. And then the things that are in the bottom, what do we do with those? Things that are in the bottom, we do what? Divide. Okay. So the things that go across the top, we multiply. The things that are in the bottom, bottom we divide. So this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to do 2.0 times 2 divided by 1. Okay, well, what's 2.0 times 2? 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Now, you might recall the rule that we started learning in the first semester about significant figures when we're doing dimensional analysis calculations. The rule is however many significant figures you start with, you must 
end with. How many significant figures are in the number 2.0? Two significant figures. So I want my answer to have how many significant figures? Two significant figures. And so my final answer for this problem is simply going to be 4.0 moles of ammonia. Okay? That's the final answer to that particular problem. 4.0 moles of ammonia. Okay? And that is your first stoichiometry problem. Okay, are we good so far? All right. Now, let's see, take that off. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down. It's not detecting my stylus. Hold on just a second. Try it from over here. Okay. Here we go. Next problem. I'm going to try to put a little more space in here for this one. Okay, you guys ready to do number two? Are we ready to do number two? Okay. It says consider the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen gases to produce water vapor. All right. What did I tell you was the very first thing we've got to do with any of these problems? We need a balanced chemical equation. It says consider the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water vapor. So what are my reactants in this particular problem? H2 and O2. You got it. Okay. So we're going to come over here and we're going to write H2 plus O2 yields H2O. Okay, so we've got H2 plus O2 yields H2O because it says we produce water. Is that equation balanced? No, that equation is not balanced. Good. We have two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right. How many oxygens do we have on the left? Two. Good. How many oxygens do we have on the right? One. So how can I balance the oxygen? How can I get two oxygens on the right? Put a two by H2O. Okay, so we're going to put a two in front of the H2O. Good job, Lydia. All right, now is my equation balanced? No, you have to put a two in front of the Good, it is not balanced because now the hydrogen is not balanced. And as Lydia said, we've got to put a two in front of the H2 in order to get that hydrogen balanced. Now do we have a balanced chemical equation? Does that look balanced now? Uh, no, yes. We've got four hydrogens on the left. We've got four hydrogens on the right. We've got two oxygens on the left, two oxygens on the right. So we've got a balanced chemical equation. Okay? Next, it says, how many moles of hydrogen gas? So the thing up here that is hydrogen is the H2. So we're going to write question mark moles. How many moles? of hydrogen gas would be required to produce 0 0.500 moles of water vapor. So again, underneath the balanced chemical equation, we write the information that we are given as well as the information that we're trying to solve for. So what we are given is 0 0.500 moles of water vapor. And what we're trying to solve for is how many moles of hydrogen, okay? So, it's going to be a very similar problem, all right? We're going from moles of one thing to moles of another thing. It doesn't matter where the thing is that you are solving for. In the previous problem, the thing that we were solving for was on the right-hand side of the reaction arrow. It was a product. And the information that we were given was a reactant. In this problem, the information that we are given is a product and what we're solving for is a reactant. But that does not affect the way that we solve the chemical problem. It is still the exact same setup. What we need is to start with the information that we are given, which is 0 0.500 moles of water. We're going to set up our train tracks here. And we need a mole-to-mole -mole ratio between 
the water and the hydrogen. So we need a mole to mole ratio between the water and the hydrogen. Well, what is that ratio from the balanced chemical equation? Two to two, you got it. That ratio is two moles of hydrogen for every two moles of water. And what we've got to do is we've got to set up that ratio in the form of a conversion factor, in other words, a fraction, in order to get moles of water to cancel out. So do I want my two moles of water from my ratio over here, do I want that to go on the top or the bottom of this conversion factor? On the bottom, in order to get the moles of water to cancel out. Two moles of water goes on the bottom, and then the other half of the conversion factor, the two moles of hydrogen, that goes on the top. Two moles of hydrogen goes on the top. So now moles of water cancels out. So in this problem, we're going to do 0 0.500 times 2 divided by 2. Well, the 2's just cancel out. Do you all agree? 2 over 2 is just the same as 1 over 1. So our answer to this question is simply 0 0.500 moles of water. Is everybody with me so far? Do you think that if you were given a mole to mole problem you could handle that? Ben? That's a great question. Okay, so what Ben asked is why are we only using the H2? Okay, so Whatever they tell us that we're solving for is the only thing that needs to go into the ratio, okay? The thing that we're solving for is always going to go on the top of the ratio, and the thing that we are given or started with, that's the thing whose coefficients is always going to go on the bottom of the ratio. So the other substance in this particular case, that would be the oxygen. The other substance that's in the balanced chemical equation we don't have to include that in the multimole ratio. Okay. Does that make sense? So we only have to focus on what we're given and what we're solving for. The assumption is that the other substance is that we always have an excess of that, meaning for this particular problem, I could assume I've got as much oxygen as I need to perform the reaction, but I do not have an unlimited supply of the water. I'm limited to a half of a mole. Right. Does that make sense? So okay, Hunter. Oh, that actually should say, thank you, that actually should say 0 0.500 moles of hydrogen, not 0 0.500 moles of water. Thank you. Because our moles of water canceled out. Okay? All right. So that, you guys, is multimole stoichiometry. It is a one-step problem. Multimole stoichiometry is always one step. And all you do is you set up your train tracks, and in your train tracks, you always start with what you are given the number that you are given, and then what follows that is a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, and that mole-to-mole -mole ratio comes from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Does that make sense? Is she being healed? <laughs> All right, so let's pause that for just